Welcome to lecture two, which covers types of data. There are six objectives for this lecture. The first, the term data will be defined. Two, populations and samples will be distinguished. Three, sampling error and uncertainty will be reviewed. Four, the fact value distinction will be discussed. Five, different types of data will be identified. And six, the four levels of measurement will be reviewed. What are data? Simply stated, data are a collection of numbers, words, pictures, measurements, observations, or descriptions of things. The word data is a plural noun. Datum is the singular. Data versus information. Data are raw, unorganized facts in need of processing. Information is data that has been organized in a context that makes it useful. In this class, you will learn how to turn data into useful information. Data processing includes a variety of techniques that turns data into information. Let's distinguish populations from samples. A population contains all the items of interest. A sample, on the other hand, contains some of the data from the population. Parameters versus statistics. Parameters are characteristics, traits, or variables of a population. Statistics are characteristics, traits, or variables from a sample. On most occasions, the discipline of statistics analyzes sample data. With inferential statistics, probability theory is used to make inferences about population parameters. The true value of parameters is usually unknown. Probability is a branch of mathematics that measures the likelihood that an event will occur. A probability or likelihood of an event is expressed as a number between 0 and 1. The probability of an impossible event is zero or zero percent. An event that is certain to occur has a probability of one or a hundred percent. Inferential statistics examples. Marketers monitor the popularity of their brands by sampling customers and then making an inference about the attitudes of all customers. Chefs taste a few drops of their sauces to make decisions about the entire batch. Manufacturers select a sample of their products from their production to determine if their output meets specifications. Samples are used more often than populations to save time and money. There are other reasons to use samples. Samples sometimes destroy items of interest as the photograph of the automobile crash test shows. Sometimes it is difficult to contact the entire population. To conduct a census, which is the counting of the entire population, it would be impossible to count every sturgeon swimming in the Hudson River. When properly conducted, samples are reliable. Reliable means consistent results when the sample is repeated. Sample size is very important. Too large a sample wastes scarce resources. Too small a sample might fail to detect important effects or results. Let's turn to sampling error and uncertainty. Sampling error is not the result of human error. This point will be demonstrated in future lectures. Sampling error is unavoidable. Sampling error occurs when the sample statistic does not equal the population parameter. Systematic error, on the other hand, is the result of human error. Remember, truth is probabilistic. To quote Richard P. Feynman, nature permits us to calculate only probabilities, yet science hasn't collapsed. When conducting any investigation of quantitative data, avoid hasty generalizations. Hasty generalizations are based on anecdotal evidence. Here is an example of a hasty generalization. Two friends bought new iPhones that broke. Apple, therefore, 
if selling defective products. Here is another hasty generalization. Four students took eight years to complete a bachelor's degree. It therefore takes longer than four years to earn a college degree. My three-year-old nephew was vaccinated for measles, and now he's autistic. Vaccinations, therefore, cause autism. Anecdotal evidence is faulty because it is based on data collected from a limited number of cases that may not represent the population. Anecdotal evidence lacks scientific verification. Data must be drawn from many cases in a manner that avoids bias. Sampling size and sample technique matter. Mickey Minaj and anecdotal evidence. When asked whether she would get the COVID vaccination, Ms. Minaj mentioned her cousin's friend. She said that this man was vaccinated and as a result, he became impotent and his testicles became swollen. As of August 29th, 2022, more than 12.5 billion doses of the COVID vaccine have been administered. The data strongly suggests that the side effects reported by Mickey Minaj are not associated with the COVID vaccines. Let us turn to the fact value distinction. A fact deals with what is. A value deals with what ought to be. Facts are descriptions or positive statements. This means that facts are empirical because they are derived from sensory experience. Values are normative or prescriptive statements. They relate to a standard of correctness. What are facts? Facts are discoverable using scientific methods. Facts are repeatable observations or measurements. Facts are also called empirical evidence. Facts are objective and verifiable. Here are some facts about strawberries. They are among the first fruits to ripen in the spring. An average strawberry has 200 seeds. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the average American eats 3.4 pounds of strawberries annually. California produces 72% of strawberries grown in the United States. What are values? Values are subjective and values cannot be verified. Values are based on a person's beliefs. Values cannot be verified empirically. Values can be culturally determined. Here are some values about strawberries. Strawberries are the best berry made by God. Cherries taste better than strawberries. Values can be studied scientifically. Polls can be conducted to determine the proportion of the population that prefers strawberries to cherries. Surveys can show how strawberries rank on taste compared to other fruit. Surveys can determine the intensity of people's feelings about strawberries. And surveys can uncover the cultural meaning associated with strawberries. Post-structuralist or post-truth philosophers reject the fact-value distinction. These philosophers include Jacques Derrida, Michel Foucault, and Bruno Latour. Latour is not a cynic. A 2018 New York Times Sunday Magazine article shows him defending science. Let's turn to the types of data. Types of data or variables. The value of a variable varies by chance. Data can be qualitative, which is to say non-numeric. And data can also be quantitative or numeric. Quantitative data can be discrete or continuous. Qualitative variables. For a qualitative, categorical, or attribute data, the characteristic being studied is non-numeric. Eye color is an example of qualitative data. Car type is another example of qualitative data. You can conduct statistical analysis with qualitative data. By counting the occurrences or frequencies, we can make quantitative data out of qualitative data. The counts or frequencies can be converted into percentages or proportions 
which are called relative frequencies. With quantitative data, information is reported numerically. Beware, not all data with numbers are quantitative. A person's social security number is not quantitative data. Your social security number is merely an identification code, which is another way of saying a name. Credit card numbers are also identification codes, as are the numbers and letters on automobile license plates. Here are some examples of quantitative data. The number of parking spots in a parking lot. The number of dogs in this picture is quantitative data. There are 71 dogs and one cat. There are two types of quantitative data. The first type is discrete data. The second type is continuous data. Discrete variables can only assume certain values, and there are usually gaps between these values. Typically, these values are whole numbers or integers, which can be counted, 1, 2, 3, and so on. The number of children in this old photograph is discrete data. There are 19 kids. The number of rooms in this historic 10-room executive home is discrete data. Continuous data can assume any value within a specified range. The time to complete a race is an example of continuous data because a second can be measured in an infinite number of sub-segments. Air pressure is a continuous variable. The air pressure in a tire is measured in pounds per square inch. This measure fluctuates with the temperature of the tires. There are an infinite number of tire pressures between 35 pounds per square inch and 36 pounds per square inch. Your weight is an example of continuous data. Your weight changes throughout the day based on what you eat and how much you exercise. The space between 124 pounds and 125 pounds is infinite. Height, like weight, is also a continuous variable. A man may say he's six feet tall, but there are an infinite number of fractional inches above and below six feet. Let's turn to the four levels of measurement. This is a very important topic because the type of analyses you can perform depends on the level of measurement for the data. The lowest level of measurement is called nominal. The second level is called ordinal. The third level is called interval. And the fourth level of measurement is called ratio. The nominal and ordinal levels are qualitative measures. The interval and ratio levels are quantitative measures. Why this is important. Techniques used to display, summarize, and analyze data depend on whether the variables are qualitative or quantitative. To repeat, the nominal level is qualitative or categorical data. With the nominal level of measurement, data are classified into categories that cannot be arranged in a meaningful order. From a statistician's perspective, alphabetical order is not considered a meaningful order. Quantitative dimensions can be added to nominal data by counting frequencies and calculating relative frequencies or proportions. An example of a nominal measure would be the color of your socks, as would the color of Yoshi the cat. Whether a person's gender is considered binary or not, gender classifications are nominal data. The numbers on athletes' uniforms is also a nominal classification. A person's religious affiliation is a nominal classification. Your birthplace is a nominal variable. A person's political affiliation is another nominal classification. There are two important characteristics of nominal data. One, nominal data are mutually exclusive. A measurement or object is included in only one category. And two, nominal data is collectively exhaustive. This means that each variable must be included in one category. Let's turn to ordinal data. Ordinal data, as the name suggests, can be ordered the data are measured with ordinal numbers, first, second, third, and so forth. 
but the difference between data values cannot be determined or are meaningless. The hotness of chili peppers, when measured on a scale of hot, hotter, and hottest, is an ordinal measure. The order of finish of these beauty contest winners, first, second, and third, is an ordinal measure because we lack information on the number of votes separating these ranks. T-shirt sizes ranging from extra small to extra large is an ordinal rank. Letter grades A, B, C, D, and F is another ordinal rank because there is no measure of the difference between these grades. The Likert scale, a commonly used psychometric scale, is an ordinal scale because there is no way to measure the distance between these ranks. That said, many researchers treat the Likert scale as if it were an interval level of measurement. The interval level is the first of two quantitative measures. It is like the ordinal scale, but quantitative differences between data values can be measured. The interval scale lacks a natural zero. Temperature measured on the Fahrenheit and Celsius scales are the classic examples of interval data. Because these scales lack an absolute zero, we cannot say a day with a 90 degree high temperature was twice as hot as a day with a 45 degree high temperature. Calendar dates are also interval measures because there is no day zero. Tide heights are also interval measures. Map longitudes are an interval measure. The zero degree prime meridian is a matter of tradition. It is not an absolute zero. SAT test scores are an interval measure because these tests lack an absolute zero. The ratio level is the highest level of measurement. It is just like the interval level with one key addition. The ratio level of measurement has a non-arbitrary zero. The addition of an absolute zero allows for the calculation of ratios. Time remaining in a class is a ratio measure because there is an absolute zero in this scale of time. Ratios can be calculated because there is an absolute zero in the scale. When there are only 10 minutes left in the class, we know half the remaining time is 5 minutes. The Scoville heat index for peppers is a ratio level measure because there is an absolute zero. The money in your pocket is a ratio measure because there is an absolute zero. Let's say you started the day with $20 in your pocket and then spend $10. You reduce the money in your pocket by half, as is the money in Elon Musk's wallet. Course credits is a ratio measure because this scale has an absolute zero. It is possible to have zero credits. Let's recap. With the nominal level, all values are qualitative and cannot be ordered in a meaningful way. The ordinal level is a qualitative measure that allows values to be ranked using ordinal numbers, first, second, third, etc. But the distance between ranks is unknown. The interval level is quantitative. Values can be ranked with a known distance between ranks. The interval scale, however, lacks an absolute zero. And finally, there is the ratio level. Values are ranked, the distance between values is known, and there is an absolute zero. The absolute zero allows for the calculation of ratios. Except where otherwise noted, clear-sighted statistics is licensed under a Creative Commons license. You are free to share derivatives of this work for non-commercial purposes only. Please attribute this work to Edward Volchak. You can access clear-sighted statistics for free along with its Excel and PowerPoint files on the CUNY Commons. The URL is https forward slash forward slash cuny dot manifold app dot org forward slash projects forward slash clear dash cited dash statistics.